Hodaki Big Show podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Josh, there's a test match on at the moment. Do you know test cricket? Do you, you have any familiarity with cricket at all? Uh, I've killed many of them, uh, and it's always been accidental. Yeah. Imagine yeah. watching one for five days, because that's what we do here. It's a five-day test match. Hey, but uh, Josh and Mike... What, uh, why, is it, why is it five days? That is a really good question. It is a really start, good question, started, actually. Test cricket started about 200 years ago, and we understand that it was a reason for men to get away from their wives. Right. And initially yeah. they were six days long. You would have two days, and you would have a rest day, and then you'd play another couple of days after that. So, well, look, I'd love to come home and look after the kids. But <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm in the middle of the game. I'm watching <laughs> the score is 560 to 12, is, yeah. and this is not over. I'm watching a test match. Now, fellas, uh, thanks so much for your time. Obviously, this is not the first time uh, you've been to these shores. You're planning on getting out and about at all. Uh, beautiful day out there. It's an Indian summer we're having in New Zealand. Any plans to sort of get out and about? i just interrupt you there and say I don't think we can say Indian summer anymore. Oh, yeah, really? It's just a long summer. Oh, is it a yeah. long summer? Yeah, yeah, taken yeah, as a yeah. racist. Uh, Sorry about that. Oh, my God. Because um, um, well, if you do, I mean, because we've got beautiful I, beaches. I, honestly, and... the word summer is a trigger warning for me. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah because sure. uh, my first girlfriend's name was Summer, and she wasn't very nice to me. And uh, yeah, well, So I'd appreciate it if you just said it's a, it's been a long, beautiful time here. <laughs> sure. Um, Beautiful day. Winter's coming. Winter is coming. Maybe yeah. just because I mean, if you guys do want to go to the beaches and stuff, because there's some beautiful places around here. I've got a kayak you can borrow if you want to do a bit of kayaking. Also, I've got a fishing rod. If you if you guys are keen, um, on that's at all, also triggering me. It's oh, a little sexual okay. overtone with you yeah. talking about your rod all the time. Oh, sure. <laughs> can you just yeah. reel that in a little bit? Plus the kayak thing. I always think to myself, like, this is how every horror movie starts. See, I'm from the desert. Yeah, the man. ocean is a scary, vast mystery to me. <laughs> and floating yes. on top of it in, like, a, like baby-type whale or, like, like giant-type fishy, you know, shaped boat. Yeah. I, d- I bought meat, a uh, meat bathing suit for Mike, <laughs> and I'm hoping he'll wear it into the water today because get them, you know. <laughs> you guys are actually planning on jumping on some bikes and going for a bit of a roadie after this. Um, so you're heading out to Piha, you've got a couple of Harleys. That's pretty damn rock star, don't you think? Is that what you do wherever you travel around the world? Well, we, we, we borrowed bikes from a, a really nice guy who who has some motorcycles and uh, and is very gracious um, to help us out. And, you know, we're just trying to see as much as we can one of the luxuries of playing here is that you get a few days to actually venture around you know how much does that factor in when you are planning tours and stuff is it like you know what i really want to go there right now or is it a matter of people coming to you and saying look we should probably hit these places no we're very much in charge of our schedule like in in australia we demand to play hobart and we demand to do at this charity gig at the mona museum there for the children's hospital every yeah. time just and on that, what did you think of that museum? Because I've just been to Tasmania as well. It's weird ass, don't you think? It's my favourite museum in the world. I, I felt, like, I felt like all the staff were like members of a cult or something. <laughs> they were wearing those weird uniforms. <laughs> And the guy that runs it's like a, a massive billionaire, and I could just see him like. No, in no. What he office. is, what he is, is a guy who's he's developed a system. So he's from gambling. It's from taking money from casinos. <laughs> yes. And it, it couldn't be more Robin Hood, <laughs> and and putting it in this and in a place that really isn't Australian. It's Tasmanian, in the same way New Zealand is really just a cut from this raw cloth on mm-hmm. its own. That sure. There's a kinship between these two islands. Um, in, in that respect and you know so we always want to play Christchurch as well a lot of bands skip it um, and um, for whatever reasons they have but so that's a good example of we got to play you know the South Island and just it's what we have that it just feels like we've come this far we're not leaving anything behind you know what, what are the reasons for cancelling Christchurch because I don't know if you heard but Blink 182 just cancelled it they put it down to logistical reasons they couldn't make it to Christchurch last night they played in uh, Sydney and they said fuck Christchurch for some reason (laughs) so maybe they know something we don't but is fuck Christchurch a logistical reason well I'd love to have sex in Christchurch and I think that's probably an important (laughs) segue is uh, you know let's get it on you know um, we'll be coming there either way if you know what I mean (laughs) nice Um, 
one thing with our show, because we work for a classic rock station, so people are oh, rock and roll, you guys, you know. Must you have that rock classic rock and roll look, I know. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the thing I want to... The yeah. secret Don't is, we're, we're all, and especially these two, we're all massively boring behind the scenes. Mm. Like, are you guys secretly boring when the lights are off and you're just away at home? Or? I appreciate you trying to get that out, that we might be secretly boring, but as you pointed out, we're going to have sex in Christchurch and ride motorcycles to the beach today. Yeah. Um, so I, I, think, <laughs> I think it answers itself. The Hodaki Big Show. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Kesey. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. There's actually a, uh, there's a, a, uh, an urban myth that's going around Wellington. I lived in Wellington for years and years and there was one that went around about you, Josh, uh, post-gig down there, it must be almost 20 years ago, but that you were walking down Cuba Street at about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and somebody screamed out at you that Dave Grohl was a, and I'm going to say the word even though there's nothing wrong with that. And that you had an altercation with this person following that. Is there any truth in it? Because I've heard that story many, many times over the years, and I, I pray it's true. There's no way that I would ever throw someone like a starfish over a parking bench into a trash can. <laughs> <laughs> it's very specific. But I, do, I would say that insulting one of my friends is not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. You know, yeah, I, I, I uh, you know... Uh, yeah, I would say that that's not a good idea. If I remember correctly as well, you had to cross the street to possibly no, do it. No, um, if this allegedly happened, <laughs> it was in this type of area which uh, uh, was just like in between shops, which was not a street. It was like a, a thoroughfare for just people to walk, apparently, you know. But, but I, I mean, I would never, you know. A, he might have been looking for a response, and he got one. He'd well, be happy. I, I think, you know, there's that old adage, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and, and, and making people's wishes come true is one of my favorite things in life. There's actually a personal uh, connection here, guys, with you, Josh, because I don't, you, you probably won't remember this, but Mike here, when you were down in Wellington, was your driver. That's right. Uh, was your driver. That's right, and yours as well. So wow. this story may be the origin. Yeah, I mean, it, it, may, it may have actually yeah. started from him, I've actually. drawn a massage since you threw me over oh, that yeah. rubbish bin. <laughs> yeah. But that was yeah. on the, uh, the Nine Inch Nails to it yeah um oh wow, yeah when yeah you guys were flipping coins if i remember correctly to see who would do the opening um yeah and i was driving you around down there and you've obviously got lasting memories of me those bonds are still yeah still i mean strong. It, it's something i'll i'll never remember and i think that <laughs> you know the funny thing is that uh the, on the subject of flipping a coin with trent Reznor to see who would as we really did do that and i really did buy a two-headed coin <laughs> beforehand <laughs> and uh i showed it to him after the second show but i i uh i like that memory that's a good one i also saw you guys play with uh smashing pumpkins i don't know if that was a toy crossing toy a coin tossing thing as well but you opened for them that night in Wellington. It was a tossing thing. It was a tossing yeah, yeah. thing, it was. It and wasn't then, coins, but that's Smashing fine. Pumpkins, <laughs> Smashing Pumpkins came on, but it was really only Billy Corgan, and they opened with about a 19-minute guitar solo, um, which we had to sort of leave halfway through. Right. How, was that, how was that too? I think you played Auckland as well. You know, um, it's fun to open for really great bands. Um, uh, it reminds me of the festival world too, where really the goal there is to ruin every band's day and, and to at at the at the increase of excitement of the audience's day. You know, I, I think the notion of having the chance to really just be yourself as much as possible, in, like being yourself in total as much as you could actually muster, and and that that is somehow. I mean, a lot of people say, you know, Josh, it's not a competition. You know, and I always say, you're right, you're no competition at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, just on festivals, one of the funniest things I think, I think it was last year, was Elton John throwing shade at you guys. Because you guys were on at the same time at Glastonbury and him just being like, enjoy having three people at your show. Like, yeah. Is it quite good being big dog by someone like Elton John? The, oh. Yeah, he, he sort of really did big dick me in oh. that way. And, and, but, you know. You guys have got a relationship with him anyway. Oh, right? he's, yeah. he's been so wonderful to us. And he's been so kind to me, 
And when he acts like a catty bitch like that, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's the sweetest. I mean, look, this is a man that when I was down uh, and just not doing well, he would call me every day for three weeks. Wow. And just, and, and uh, you know, every once in a while I get flowers. <laughs> you know, he just, the, you don't know. You know, some of these people that have done this for a long time, they never were nice people in the first place. And, and you know, we're joking around and, and shit, and, and, and that's just, for, just to make fun, you know, and, and have fun. But in a very serious way, he's just one of those guys that is just, I just love him, honestly. So when he was like, good luck playing to three people, <laughs> yeah. I thought it was the funniest thing of all time. I mean, I was sitting, like, within kissing distance, and, and, I, and I also, he was right. Yeah. <laughs> he broke yeah. a record, didn't he? He like, had millions of people watching. Well, like, there was 35,000 people when we walked out, but it holds 65,000. <laughs> and when we played against Beyonce, there was, like, 70,000 people. And so, and no one said anything to, you know, Kevin, our tour manager, wherever he is now. So, we walked out like, let's go. <laughs> oh. See Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I used to be in a, uh, a comedy duo years ago. Oh, God. Um, What's I can totally that? tell. Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah. I mean, funny You're killing it right now. You know, and we had we had a theory that we never performed to an audience that was smaller than the two of us. In other words, anything less than two people, we wouldn't go mm. on stage. And it was amazing how many gigs we did to two people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which makes it a massively intimate sort of situation. And a total success. Oh, total success. <laughs> Um, yeah, but it's interesting because you know we were we were talking before we we started the interview about you know Mike and I we have our addictions and we've had our addictions in our lives and given up most of the things we enjoy drinking and smoking and stuff like that and and, and I was other reading stuff. and other stuff and yet and you're still reading, together and you're still think together that's you know and I was reading a remarkable thing when I was you know reading up about you guys that touring musicians apparently die 12 years younger on average than mm. than uh, does that freak you out at all? Um, I remember reading that statistic myself, and I, and um, no, I just think, I, I mean, not to sound morbid, but that's the way it goes, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, the candle that burns twice as bright, shame on you. <laughs> Wait, what is it again? <laughs> but, but do you have, like, you know, because I, I, I'm getting older now, and you, you look back on your life and you go, my God, the things I did and the risks I took and the strange stuff I did. I have a sense of gratitude now in terms of my life. Do you, do you get that sometimes? You, you look at the situation here, you're, you're doing what you do and you're doing it better than ever. Is there a, are there moments for you where it's like, shit here, man, I, I'm loving this, I'm loving life, I'm grateful for it? Yeah, I don't think we would trade it for anything else. I mean, no. yeah. Damn, I think we're so pushing. lucky to live the life we live. And we, I mean, we chose it and we're fortunate enough to be here. And yeah. It's only a semantic distinction, but for me, it's not luck. It's like being, it's feeling blessed. Like this, how, what are the chances, you know? I mean, I, you know, I sincerely, for years, have been waiting for someone to just ring my doorbell and, and I open it and they're in lab coats with the, you know, like a, whatever the fuck that's clipboard. called. Again. Yeah, clipboard. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, uh, says here, People hate your music now. It's over. It's <laughs> been a terrible mistake. Yeah, and, 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 honestly, and honestly, I would be, I would sort of say like, well, that was a long time though. Yeah. That was a long time. But on touring though, like the Rolling Stones, they've been going for over fifty years. Maybe touring is the key. Staying out there, getting amongst it. Pickling is the key. Pickling. Yeah. And canning your own vegetables. Pickling and canning. And you live The Hodaki Big Show. The Hodaki Big Show with Jason Hoyt, Mike Benogan, Kesey. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Working in radio, you know, we've got teams of researchers saying this is what people want to listen to, right? You've got to play the Phillies, Quatza. Holy shit, jazzies. scoot over, would you? Getting a little Scoot-over. tanning on the side yeah. of my left ear. Yeah. So there's all these bands, like a lot of Green Day for Jace's sake, the Chili's. Um, I, it seems like it's really hard nowadays to break into that genre, you know what I mean? Um, what do you think it was about late 90s, 2000s that has been so enduring and it's almost such a hard act to follow? I think the real question is why is radio to always have to play it so safe that it can't pick up its... Radio could be the coolest thing of all time. Yeah. All it, it, what if it was just everything that was cool without respect to genre from... 
the beginning of music till tomorrow. I mean, why can't it just be that? I, I think people would respond to that. And frankly, not to be a dick, but I think just playing that same shit over and over is a mistake. And I Absolutely. think if that's what you're doing, you're making a mistake because you've got a great opportunity. Plus, being in radio is tougher than ever. So you, we risk everything in our lives and our families to come all the way here. The least you guys could do is take a little risk yourself. Yeah, and I, that's not, I'm not no, trying that's to be the a biggest garage. I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to be a no. Well, why would a production manager or, you know, like, or why, uh, why would, what's it called again? Program director. Program director. Yeah. Why the fuck would that person need to, why would that person be in charge? Mm. I think people actually want to hear the personalities of the DJs and they're already doing that and you're already guaranteeing your spot by speaking in a certain manner, right? Mm. But then, then to say like, but clearly your taste in music would be shit so you can't put that personal responsibility <laughs> on you is, is just honestly, the what is it again? Program director. It really <laughs> needs to... Clipboard. You know, <laughs> yeah. they, these program directors, sincerely and at the risk of my own whatever, they really need to, uh, you know, let their cheeks go loose so the stick will drop out and yeah. realize, like, um, stop being walking around like such a scared little baby all the time. Well, that's the risk that you guys take, right? With I mean, when you did like clockwork, and there was a concern from you that maybe the music was a little bit softer than you thought the fan base might. No, be I just thought it was more bummery. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, yeah. But it's fucking awesome. And then the new album. I saw, I saw your interview with uh, Bill Burr, big follower of Bill Burr, and you were talking about how this new album takes like fifty listens before you can really get it. How does that work for you guys if you're in the studio, if you think to yourself, do I have to play this 50 times before I know it's good, or I know it's good, but it's going to take other people 50 times to listen to it? I think that we take simple ideas and keep overlapping them and weaving together, and so they're sort of stupidly dense. You know, they're still groovy, and the, but it, it can take a number of listens to really let it sink in, but I think that's what gives you the possibility of listening to something over and over and over and for years on end. Mm because you can sort of, you take it at each level, you know, you keep licking it and there's another layer underneath it, you know? Yeah. Mike, question for you. Obviously, um, our, like our radio show, right? We're on the radio in New Zealand, which is the equivalent of being on like a very small student radio in the States. Um, family, friends, they don't, Keezy, come on, mate. They don't, they don't care that you're on the, like they're embarrassed by our show. Like what's it like in terms of family and friends when you're like a rock star, you know what I mean? Are they like, oh, yeah, whatever, man, we don't care. Uh, I'm, I mean, actually I was in, I did radio just like you did. Oh, right, well, oh, you would have done it better than he did. It. I did, <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah, I've proved it. <laughs> <laughs> I've proven it. <laughs> well, how did you go between radio and, and then actually being part of a successful band? Was that something you always were kind of tutoing with in the background? And then Tutoing means playing. Oh, that's a New Zealand thing. Tutoing? Tutoing. Like when you bring a little dog around? Or the band Toto specifically. We toe the line, that's what we do. Classic rock. I think what Keezy's getting at, because I have four daughters, um, you wow. know, I've been doing radio and acting all my life. They couldn't give two shits. They think he's uh, lame. They think they I'm lame think as. Lame, yeah. um, you know, and I often ask them, do you, do you ever listen to my radio show? Do you ever watch my stuff? And they're like, nah. <laughs> is it the same for you? you know, I'm I'm like, I don't oh, have any okay. children, so they okay. Yeah, That's you're cool. good. Yeah. I'm obviously yeah. an inspiration in your life, clearly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's making me not want to have They've all become yeah, accountants. Yeah. Man, I actually <laughs> felt bad for you for like five seconds there. Yeah. <laughs> he prays on that, don't. Yeah. But then I realized I'm sitting here listening to it, and then I was like, nah, nah. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> no, this is, this is just what happens, you know? I mean, one man's shepherd pie is another girl's, what the fuck are you doing right now? And I, and I think, I, I don't know, it's, I've tried to score points with my kids, too. I uh, took my daughter, you know, um, this, had this guy, Hedy Slimane, he's a fashion designer. And so he took some photos of me and then put them on a, some, a couple of billboards. And uh, so I took my daughter, and then he invited me to go to the runway show, which really ain't my world. Sure. But I think he took photos because I'm not from that world. I think that's why. So I, I brought my daughter to score points. And we're sitting <laughs> down next to Joan Jett and Mark Ronson and just this endless on the in the front row, and she looks at me and she goes, "Daddy, what's Yeva Saint Laurent?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "It was hard for me to explain what the hell it was because yeah. at first I didn't know what the hell she was saying. 
she was only 10, you know, at the time. And uh, so she looked at me and she was like, when can we go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I was like, whenever you're ready, baby. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I score some bonus points with my daughters because I often, you know, score free free gigs and stuff like that. So I sort of redeem myself. In that free way. gigs? Well, you know, through the radio station. We can, oh, you get we to go, go to get, shows, get, yeah. whatever you like. Yeah. Stuff. Then I'm cool. Yeah. Oh. You know what I mean? Well, just a no, stretch. I well, I mean, yeah, stretch. I am. Yeah. Yeah, right. I am, Casey, I'm cool. And then they go, yeah, my dad's cool. But everything else I do is shit else. Um, yeah, <laughs> shit out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with the door open, too. just sitting there yeah, reading yeah, the paper yeah. on a beautiful <laughs> day. And you've run out of Dunny paper. Yeah. Well, fellas, thank you very much for letting us interview today. We really appreciate you making yourselves available. Like, not, not every rock band does that. So it's bloody awesome for us and our listeners as well. Um, and good luck tonight, rest of the show, and have fun on those bikes out there. It's break a leg. Thank you. Uh, but not with the bikes. All right, thank no. you. Cut. Cheers, fellas. Thanks, boys. Thanks, guys. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast.